Dennis. Hey, congratulations for the apology. Thank you. So let's ask that, uh, you know, obligatory question. What initially attracted you to this uh, project for, for your? So well, first off, I got a very beautiful letter from Alison Starlock and uh, the writer and director. And she's obviously someone who, you know, had knew my career and I, and I was her first choice, which is actually, you know, I don't get that very often these days. You know, often I'm taking what's left after about six people have passed, it, <laughs> passed on it. Um, and then when I read it, I was kind of very impacted by how powerful the piece was. It's very raw. And it felt like a real challenge and I love a challenge. That's kind of, you know, what every actor I think really looks for is something that's gonna push you push you further and, and take you places you haven't been before. And then when I talked to Ali, I just felt like I was in good hands with somebody I trusted and that we could work this together and understand it and that somehow I'd be able to deliver it. So um, that's why. In a way it was almost like, I remember I, I took the, uh, the meeting with her and normally what you're supposed to do is end the meeting and say, well, thanks very much. I'll consider it, get back to you. But I just said, look, there's no point in me pretending. I, I, want, to, I want to go for this. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm speaking because you said it's a, it's a lot different from a lot of characters you've played before. Tell us about getting in this headspace of Jack because, you know, there's a lot of going on in his headspace. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've got to talk about it without giving too much away for the audience. But obviously, you know, Jack is holding a very, very dark secret. And, uh, you know, it's, there's nothing that can be condoned at all about his actions. And for a while, I was very focused on that and, you know, just like almost digging into the details of what he did and how he would have lived with it and coped going forward. So there's a lot of sort of history of that. But in the end, what gave me the key to the role, I think, was actually my wife helped me see this, is just the fact that he cannot admit to anything other than he's, a, he's not a bad man. He's a good man and an accident happened. And that's his pathology. I mean, it's pathological how far, I mean, it's almost sociopathic how far he's gone with that. And that's really the theme of the movie is what does it take to get someone to be accountable and take responsibility? And it sort of doubles down on that idea and what, what he goes there to do and what she puts him through to get there. And do we completely get there even then? Because the denial is so deep. That was really the journey. And I think for me, it was fun to have if you like an anchor or a buoy that I could hold on to that really whatever happens, he's still just, I'm not a bad man. It was an accident. I mean, in his own way, it's kind of laughable, right? Like, do you expect anyone to accept apology like that? <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's not, e exactly, that's why it's called the apology. That's why I think it's a brilliant script, you see. I think it's a wonderful idea that Ali focused on, you know, to, and if you're gonna do a small budget drama, you want a really strong idea like this, you know, just two people trapped in a house and one's not willing to take responsibility and see himself for who he actually is. And then I think it's up for the audience at the end if he really does or not. So what was it like uh, being in a film, how can you say, such a small cast? I mean, literally is just a two person story, not yeah. just Kevin Janine, of course, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it, it's like, a, what do they call it? A chamber piece, isn't it? You know, and so, uh, you know, it almost works like a play. And we we did a lot of um, prep quite a few months ahead on Zoom. There were a lot of meetings, a lot of talking, a, a lot of sort of understanding of the world and making sure we were comfortable with, you know, the structure of it, etc. But when it actually came to doing it, it was kind of interesting. It just became very sort of immediate. There wasn't a lot of discussion. It was more like, bring it all on camera. You know, don't let's over talk it. Let's not overthink it. You know, let's have it live on camera. And that's actually more and more a way I like to work. I think different projects demand different things, but it really worked for this. So you weren't sort of um, overthinking, talking, and then trying to do it. It was literally happening in, on the camera in the moment. And then if it wasn't quite right, we'd do it again with a different way. But um, I, it was very liberating. So it was really like, do it, walk away. Do it, walk away. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
So on uh, so the chemistry between uh, you and Anna, what was that easily established way before you? You started this production then? Well, we I mean, we'd worked together briefly many a long time ago. I think, you know, a part of leaving each other alone was also that it was a sort of high stakes, high intensity uh, for both characters. And in a way, I think just letting each other not interfering with each other was a, a very instinctual and the right thing to do. You know, I did that with um, in, in the film Mandy with Nicolas Cage. I remember him saying to me, um, after we chatted at the beginning, wouldn't it be great actually if we don't talk too much? Let's just leave each other, you know, not, not, not be sociable and all that. Just just do bring it on camera. And I think Anna and I didn't really discuss it, but as we went into shooting, that's what happened. That's, that's an interesting uh, acting uh, method, in, in fact. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually really enjoy it because I, to be totally frank, one of the... Uh, I find one of the hardest things on a movie set is the sociable side of it because you've got all these people you're supposed to be nice to and respond to and talk, you know, and every day, you've, and, and it can be like that if you, but if you're doing something really intense, you basically just want to sort of just be very quiet and then, you know, get ready, go on camera, action, do it, bring it and walk away and, de and decompress. So, um, and I think most film crews are very used to actors doing that anyway. But yeah, it's kind of nice to be freed up from like, oh, are you all right? Is everything, you know, <laughs> just to sort of be trusting enough to get on with the work and let the chemistry, because often you can, I think it's different, you see, from theatre. You need to build something that then you can do every night over and over again. On camera, often you just need to catch it once, you know, you just need to get it at one time and it's on camera. So you don't want to overthink, overplay, overdo stuff. You kind of want it to, if you can, cap, you know, you want to, it's really preparation and then letting it happen. And, and I have to say, there are some pretty intense scenes in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have not seen the movie, so I, I don't know what it looks like, but I do remember doing them. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and what was it like, uh, you know, according to my notes, was uh, the production um, basically all in one setting location. I want to say the snowy, non-snowy part of Los Angeles <laughs> was, was in my notes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were getting into spring and um, it was kind of funny trying to pretend to blow snow through a door in, in you know, 70 degrees. But um, it's kind of nice in one way to be in one location, I have to say, because then you just every day, you know where you are. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the house becomes its own sort of character in the movie. And you, it, we slowly worked our way through the house, basically. Uh, originally, I think the basement scenes were going to be done in a different location because it was such a small. But we ended up shooting in that basement as well. So it was, you know, the whole thing just in that one house. So slowly we worked our way up the stairs and uh, did every room in the house. But, yeah, I... I I again, I haven't seen it, but I felt like um, the production design and the cin cinematography, the lighting, it all felt really good. So uh, it was a great team. It was a great spirit and a great, um, great crew overall. And I think everyone was very kind of uh, everyone was on board to make the movie. There was a feeling of camaraderie around it. Well, that's excellent. So tell, tell us how you choose your projects, because, you know, this is like much more of an independent project, but I know. You go from like independent projects to big, big television and projects yeah. back and forth and so on. And a, and a lot of stuff I've seen is pretty dramatic uh, from you. Yeah, I tend to go that direction. It's true. I mean, I go dramatic, but, uh, you know, but I also try to go for a wide range of character. Um, I mean, how do I choose them? I mean, I've, sometimes I think they choose me, like with the apology, Ali chose me and I responded to the topic, you know. Uh, I mean, I've had a few things maybe I walk away from, but I I'm just seem to be lucky. Maybe it's, you know, when you've set something in motion, people sort of pick up on it. Like I did this movie, My Policeman, for Amazon this year. And then Ron Nicewana, who wrote that, he wrote me a role in the TV series that he's been doing in still shooting. Actually, I just finished on it uh, a couple of weeks ago called uh, Fellow Travelers. So, again, 
Ron chose me. Um, and, and I never really know. Sometimes I I've, I've have an idea of what I'd like to be doing. And then sometimes it'll appear and sometimes not. Or sometimes it turns up in a different guise than what I thought it was going to be. But as long as I'm still working and doing stuff that really kind of I like being pushed like this role. It, it demanded that I actually kind of really step up to the plate. You know, there was no sitting back on anything in that, you know, you kind of everything was on the line all the time. And I actually really liked that, you know. That That is great. Well, I really appreciate you uh, carrying this conversation uh, with us about uh, the apology. And you know what? I, I want to say I can't wait till the audiences and you to uh, watch watch yourself on screen right i don't know when i'll watch it i might wait a little while <laughs> <laughs> both decks and well hopefully we get to do this again i hope so it's lovely to meet you lovely to meet you yeah nice thank to meet you, you too. Bye -bye.